Hi, I'm David Stewart. I'm an engineering manager at Intel, part of our Open Source Technology Center. We're really working to make sure that if you choose Solaris or Open Solaris, uh, we want to make sure that Intel has the best uh, products to run those operating systems on, particularly the Intel Xeon processor. Uh, one of the things I heard from a senior manager, though, at another company is, you know, I kind of always assumed, and this is what he was saying, he says, I've always assumed that maybe the latest features of Solaris are really not available for Intel processors. And, you know, maybe similarly, the uh, assumption is that the latest Intel technologies are not available for Solaris. And uh, the great news is that the best features, I think, of Solaris and Open Solaris are available on Intel processors. And uh, I'll, let me give you a specific example of that. Um, and the, one of the newest and hottest and greatest features of uh, Solaris and Open Solaris is ZFS, or in some countries, Trees, might be referred to as ZFS. Um, this is a great feature within uh, Solaris and a very uh, a positive, exciting uh, kind of uh, interest in this thing. Well, we're doing actually work to make sure that ZFS runs best on Intel Xeon processors. Let me show you how this works. Um, basically, uh, again, this is ZFS or ZFS. This is part of uh, what's called the Z Zetabyte file system. It's a feature in both Solaris 10 as well as uh, Open Solaris. Um, and I'm also talking here about the Intel Core microarchitecture in particular. Um, this is the architecture that was uh, formerly codenamed Nehalem, um, and uh, it's available today. Uh, one of the things that ZFS gives you is the ability, uh, it really combines um, the RAID layer and the file system layer into a single, uh, you know, really well-coordinated software layer. So here's a simple example. Maybe I've got a computer, has three disk drives uh, connected to it. Um, you know, if one of these disks fails, uh, boy, that's really a lot of work to recover the data and uh, really interrupts a lot of work. So you might use RAID in this case um, to manage this data, have it look as one kind of contiguous uh, part of data, or maybe you'd want to split it up some uh, in some other ways. But if a disk gets lost, um, why we want to be able to still um, have the system run and uh, the, the software take care of that. So what, with, um, in this simple example here, I've used uh, the zpool command at a command prompt, zpool create, and I've given a name for a file system called Vault. And in this case, I've said it's using RAID Z. And RAID Z is a new RAID level that's been developed for ZFS. Uh, you might be familiar with RAID 5 or other sort of RAID levels that are, are used in this case. Um, and then just three device names here. All right, so what that's done is that's made available to you uh, some storage under slash vault. And it allows you to make sure, OK, um, now I've got the storage available that I can actually make use of um, as one big piece of storage, or there's other things that I can do with the, the pool of storage. Now, um, a lot of times, uh, you know, if you have a disk drive failure, you know, what, what happens? In fact, uh, um, you know, we actually uh, have, uh, I saw a demo of uh, Jeff Bonwick and Jim Hughes, a couple of uh, um, very senior guys, uh, actually set up a system like this and take a, a sledgehammer to one of the disk drives and, uh, you know, another guy took an electric drill and actually drilled through another disk drive and, you know, the data was still available. Um, the system recovered it uh, fine and it continued to process and plugging in a new disk drive, um, it starts recovering the data onto that. and you know, work really well. In fact, you can find that demo on YouTube if you search for it. Um, in this case, though, to make this work, uh, what you have to do is you use a lot of cyclic redundancy checks because um, basically, again, that's how you um, make sure that the data is stored redundantly. And uh, in this case, what we did in the lab is we actually used uh, a new instruction in the Intel Core microarchitecture. Now, remember, our microprocessor architects are actually looking at sequences of instructions that commonly show up in software and then say, well, I can turn that sequence of instructions into a single instruction. And in this case, the CRC32 instruction is a new instruction that does a cyclic redundancy check. By changing the code to ZFS and using CRC32, we're actually able to get really good speed ups. In fact, um, as a result of, of our work, a simple experiment in the lab, we were actually able to get the file bench workload um, to speed up under, you know, using, again, RAID Z, 8% um, speed up under certain uh, conditions. That's very good. Obviously, your mileage may vary in terms of uh, actual workloads or actual uh, setups. But um, this is a great example, I think, of, um, and I, you know, I think would be so bold as to say that the Intel Core Microarchitecture architecture may be the best choice to use um, if you're using ZFS because of this kind of optimization work and the Intel technology that's going into the processor. So I really encourage you to 
go to OpenSolaris.com, get the latest OpenSolaris release, um, monitor the Intel platform project because this is the place where, again, we coordinate a lot of uh, community involvement in optimizations like CRC32, and uh, eventually this will show up in an OpenSolaris release and in a, a Solaris 10 release. So keep track of this, and uh, certainly the core microarchitecture as it uh, you know, comes more and more online, I think you're going to find uh, a lot of really uh, amazing ZFS support from Intel Architecture.